You see, in the early versions of the superconductive magnet, they originally started out with a metallic core in the centre, a tube. They changed that uh, because of the uh, problems of, of gradients interacting. They changed that to a fibreglass core, but then because of the way the superconductive magnets are made, uh, in the superconductive region they have a copper screen, or several uh, copper screens, which uh, uh, help to uh, make the superconductive magnet work better. And it's those copper screens that would pick up the eddy currents. And without magnetic screening, uh, those eddy currents would actually last for, you know, in some cases, as long as a second. You could upset the magnetic field and it would take maybe one second or so to recover. And of course, if you tried to do imaging in that one second, you couldn't because everything was moving. Then I had this uh, idea that came. I, I remember uh, one of the postdocs that was working with me at the time, uh, a, a, chap, a chap called um, uh, Barry Chapman. <clears throat> he was down uh, in a room next to the lab and I remember racing down uh, to him one day and uh, telling him that I'd solved the problem and uh, he listened patiently while I said what we should do is not create one magnetic field in the gradient coil but two magnetic fields, one to shield the gradient coil itself and if we could do it properly uh, and I'd done some calculations, very uh, elementary ones, but I'd done some to uh, substantiate what I was saying, that uh, you could uh, perhaps shield the inner gradient coil with this second coil and um, the magnetic field outside the second coil from the gradient coil would be zero, which meant you could place the whole thing inside a supercon, switch as fast as you wished and there would be no interaction with the main magnet. That was the idea. And uh, it needed, obviously, uh, fleshing out in detail calculations, which I had already started, but um, I continued with uh, Barry Chapman, and uh, we published a paper on magnetic screening. We had a new fellow that uh, had joined the department, and uh, his name was Bob Turner. And uh, he was very keen when he heard what I was trying to do. He's very keen to join in and uh, actually, uh, you know, do some calculations on his own. But uh, he tried uh, one method which um, uh, didn't work. It's a very complicated uh, theoretical method which he tried and it didn't work. And um, so we went ahead with the filing of the patent, our first patent. But then he spoke, Bob Turner spoke to another member of staff who is a theoretician in the department. And um, the theoretician uh, had done some similar work, not on gradient core design, but it was a related problem and the mathematics uh, was very similar to what he wanted. So the two of them collaborated and produced a very elegant piece of work. And uh, it really you know, did a much better job than I had done with, with my calculations. But uh, nevertheless, we said to them, well, wouldn't it make sense if we included you on the patent? Because then we've got everything, you know, all our ideas, my ideas, uh, Barry Chapman's ideas, and then uh, um, uh, 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 Roger Bowley, uh, the theoretician, and Bob Turner. So we combined efforts and added some extra material to the patent. The magnetic screening was a major step forward, and it was actually uh, picked up almost immediately by all the manufacturers who started to uh, uh, introduce magnetic screening. The only firm that we had problems with was GE, 
they wouldn't pay royalties for the first year or so, but then when it was settled in the European and American courts, I had to go to, to, to the States, stand up and swear that uh, we'd done this when we did and so on. And uh, it was accepted and that was that. So they paid uh, royalty and uh, I, I think the university uh, and the inventors did reasonably well out of it. But it was essential because EPI uh, really wouldn't work in the superconductor if we didn't have that uh, magnetic screening.